Hi, I'm Chana, a PhD student in Dr. Maanya lab. In this lecture, I will briefly talking about uh, the network-based clustering. This lecture will have four sections. Uh, the first section explains why clustering. The second the section will explain the mathematical representations of the network. The third uh, section will give the concrete example and uh, several popular network-based clustering algorithms, uh, methods, and uh, short effects. And the, in the fourth section, I will explain two algorithms. The first one is uh, density peak, and the second one is uh, link community. So why clustering? Uh, we need clustering to extract biological meaningful structures from the data, and also to understand the relationship among these structures. Clustering can also help to reduce the data to an analyzable size, which has particular demerits in this big data era. It also helps to visualize the data of high dimension and large size with the help of network visualization softwares. So let's um, talk about some basics about the mathematical representation of a network. First, let's see what is the, the distance matrix. On the left, um, it is uh, for the, uh, on the left uh, show the four circles on a two-dimensional space. They are labeled one to four. And on the right, uh, if the distance matrix uh, describes the relationships of these four circles in space. The distance matrix uh, have four rows and four columns, all match to the four circles. So the values on the joint of uh, the row and the circle, for example, this value of 0 0.2 here, means the distance from the row circle to the column circle, which is the circle 1 uh, to the circle 2, the distance is 0 0.2. And uh, this value on the second row and the uh, fourth column mean the distance from the second circle to the fourth circle, and its value is 0 0.35. And along the diagonal is the distance from a circle to itself, which is uh, surely B0. Uh, and you can also find that the values are actually symmetric along the diagonal because uh, uh, for example, the distance from this uh, the third circle to the fourth circle is uh, equivalent to the distance from the third, uh, fourth circle to the third. So this matrix is symmetric along the diagonal. After you have this distance matrix, you can easily apply some threshold and link uh, the circles whose distance is smaller than this threshold. For example, uh, here I set the threshold at 0 0.3. So any two nodes whose distance is smaller than 0 0.3, I will connect them to, uh, to connect all these circles into a network. Uh, for example, uh, the distance from the circle 1 to circle 3 is 0 0.23, and it's smaller 3. I connected them uh, by line. And uh, for the uh, and the distance between circle 1 and circle 4 is 0 0.6, and it's larger than 0 0.3. I will not connect them. So uh, by applying some threshold of distance matrix, you can get this network. When you apply the threshold, you actually transform this distance matrix to this binary matrix, uh, in which you set 1 to any distance smaller than threshold and 0 to any uh, distance larger uh, than this threshold, but you still set zero on the diagonal uh, because uh, you don't want uh, a node to connect to itself. So actually, if you have this binary matrix, you can construct this network based on the binary matrix, and you can reversely, you can when you have this uh, network representation, you can construct uh, this binary matrix from the network. So the binary matrix and the, the network are actually equivalent. Next, I will show, uh, show a concrete uh, clustering example. 
the data set I used is a 978 gene expression measurement from 3,164 experiments. In each of these experiments is a drug of a specific dose applied on a breast cancer cell line for a certain amount of time. And I will use the get fee visualization tool uh, to visualize this net network. So I started from the raw data. In the raw data uh, are the replicates of the 3,164 uh, 3, experiments and also control replicates. I apply the characteristic direction algorithm that uh, Neil, I think Neil has teached you uh, to uh, generate one characteristic direction uh, signature for each experiment. And uh, each of the characters direction is a vector of the size of 978. And it's a column vector. So if you place all those 3,000 uh, characters direction uh, vectors or signatures side by side, you can get this matrix of uh, 978 by 3,164. Uh, in this matrix, the rows are the genes and the columns are the experiments. I will calculate the distance uh, between the columns, so the distance between the experiments, and uh, after the calculation, I can get this 3,164 by 3,164 distance matrix. In this matrix, the values will be the distance uh, between two experiments as a matter of the cosine distance between the two characters direction signatures. And from this distance matrix, I can apply some cutoff to get this get the binary uh, matrix, and from the binary matrix, I will input it into the GAFI to uh, get the network. So this is the GAFI realization of the network. Uh, after I input the binary matrix into the GAFI software, I uh, applied some network visualization um, algorithm uh, to generate this figure. So after such uh, network realization, you can already discern some clusters by your eye. So it has this three, at least three big clusters, this cluster, this cluster, and uh, these big ones. Um, but by eye, it's uh, still subjective. We need to apply some uh, clustering algorithms to give our, to give some more objective results. This is a list of the most popular uh, network clustering methods. The first one um, I like the most. It's simple, yet very powerful. It is published this year in Science. The second uh, method that I'm also very interested in is actually a very singular method in this domain of network clustering algorithms because it clusters the edges in the network rather than the nodes. It's published in Nature in uh, 2010. And the third one is uh, called the InfoMap method, uh, which actually could give you, uh, give you clusters at, at multiple levels. Uh, on the first level may be some big clusters, and the second level will further divide the big cluster into uh, small subclusters. The fast unfolding algorithms is extremely suitable for very large networks of even millions of nodes. It is the default algorithm implemented in the network clustering function in GAFI. And that's also people commonly use and it's also a simple method. And there are also this Newman method and the software clustering methods that are also very popular. I will cluster uh, my network using the first three methods. Here are the clustering results by the three different uh, methods. To generate uh, each of these three figures, I first apply the algorithm either on the distance matrix or the binary matrix depending on the algorithm, and uh, the algorithm will give me clusters of nodes. And from such result, I can assign a cluster label to each node 
uh, in this network. And I will input this uh, label into the Gaffey software and uh, color the node by the cluster labels. So you can see the different methods uh, actually give uh, relatively different results. At the first side, the second one, uh, just by texture, you can feel it's different from the other two because this one actually color edges instead of the nodes. And for the other two, the info map seems to give uh, big clusters, while the density peak give you a finer division of the big clusters. As we can see, different uh, clustering algorithm give, give different routes. The question will be which method to choose. I think this will come uh, to the biological prior knowledge of the network. Normally, uh, most people will just use their favorite method to do the network clustering, uh, but more objectively, you will apply several different methods on the clustering method on the network and choose the best one. Uh, recall that in this network, each node is experiment of uh, drug perturbations applied on cell lines at a specific dose and time point. So uh, cell lines, given the similar drugs, should have similar response. Uh, that exactly what the second figure tells us. In the second figure, the nodes or the experiments are colored by their drug class, by their drug target. So you can see the first two big clusters actually share the same target, and the third uh, cluster share another target uh, colored by the green. And even for cell lines uh, treated with drugs of, uh, of the same target, we still expect that the same cell lines should respond more similar than the different cell lines. So within this green target cluster, if you cluster the network by cell lines, you can see these big clusters are further divided into several small clusters, which uh, uh, matches to the different cell lines. So these different colors mean different cell lines, uh, which suggests a cell contact specific response to the same drug perturbation. Uh, now we have some prior knowledge of the network. We can compare this knowledge to the uh, clustering results we get in the previous slides. You can see that the info map method matches the network from the target pro perspective, while the density peak method matches the network more from the cell line perspective. I would argue that both methods are valid. It will depend on your research interest. The next, uh, I will uh, briefly explain the density peak algorithm. Uh, in the density peak, there are three steps involved in the density peak algorithm. The first step is to compute the local density rho and the distance to nodes of higher density delta. Basically, you compute the, this rho and the delta, these two quantities for each node. And the second step is to pick the clustering centers from the rho delta plot, and the third um, step is to assign node to clustering centers. I will explain this, these three steps uh, one by one. So let's first uh, compute the local density rho. On the right are the mathematical formulas. I will not explain this, but uh, give you a more intuitive uh, explanation on the graph. The first thing uh, is to set a constant distance. Empirically, uh, this constant di distance dc can be chosen at the shortest 1% uh, to 2% distance in the distance matrix. Uh, by the way, this uh, algorithm uh, is operating on the distance matrix instead of the binary matrix. So after pick this uh, constant distance dc, let's compute the rho or the local density for the node 27. So we actually draw a circle 
uh, centered around the node 27 with the radius with the radius of uh, DC. And uh, then we count uh, how many nodes are within this circle. Since there are no nodes within the circle, so the row or the local density of node 27 will be zero. Let's exam next examine the node 10. Uh, similarly, we draw the circle with radius of DC around node 10 and I count the number of nodes within the circle. We found there are four nodes within the circle, so the row or local density of node 10 is 4. Now let's do the local density for the 1. You draw the circle, you find there are 7 nodes uh, within this circle, and the local density of node 1 will be 7. And using the same method, you can compute the, the parameter row or the local density for every node on the graph. After computing the local density for each node, uh, we next compute the delta. This is a mathematical formula for calculating the delta. Uh, it looks very simple, but I feel like it's harder to explain than the local density. Anyway, uh, let's look at the node 27. Uh, remember that all the nodes now on the graph have already a local density parameter calculated for them. So the first thing we need to do is to find all the nodes which have a higher local density than the local density of node 27. We can easily say that all the, node, all the other nodes except node 26 and node 28 have a local density higher than node 27 because these two nodes also have no neighbors around them, so their local density are zero also. Among all the other nodes that have a higher local density, node 15 is the closest one to node 27. So this distance from node 27 to node 15 will be the delta for node 27. Uh, let's next examine uh, node 10. The node 10 has a local density of 4, so the first thing we need to do uh, is to find all the nodes which have uh, a higher local density than 4. It seems uh, all these nodes around uh, in this area uh, looks like to have a um, local density higher than 4. And among these nodes, it looks like node 2 has the shortest distance to node 10. So the distance from node 10 to node 2 will be the delta for node 10. If we look at uh, node 1, it has the highest local density. Uh, there are no nodes that have a higher local density uh, than node 1. We, we, we just set the delta of node 1 to the furthest node to itself. Uh, which will be the node 28 that has the largest distance to the node 1. Uh, this will be the delta of node 1. And uh, similarly, we can calculate the delta for all the nodes on the graph. Now we have two parameters, rho and delta, associated with each node on the graph. We can do a scatter plot based on these two quantities. The axis will be rho and the y-axis will be delta. In this scattering plot, the Gaussian centers will be the nodes on the top right corner. Uh, we can easily find them as the, uh, the outliers on this plot. So the Gaussian centers have to have both high rho and high delta. This is the second step, and the final step is to assign um, nodes into clustering centers. It's, it is very easy to do, just uh, compute uh, the distance of every node to node 10 and node 1 and uh, assign them to the uh, nearest clustering center. And we get uh, two clusters, the cluster around node 10 and the clusters uh, around node 1. So uh, this is uh, the local density peak method. The second algorithm is a link commuting algorithm. 
I found this algorithm particularly interesting uh, because this algorithm is specifically designed to tackle the problem as presented in the figure one. So figure one is a very simple network. Just by eye, uh, you can identify three networks, the green networks, the yellow networks, and then the blue networks. Uh, but the problem is which cluster the node 4 belongs to. Any node-based clustering algorithm will finally assign node 1, node 4 to uh, either of the three clusters. But actually, node 4 connected to all the three clusters. But if you look the network from the perspective of edges, you can also get a three edge clusters, but with no overlapping. There will be no problem of which node belong to which cluster. It will be a cluster of edges. And the node 4 will belong to all the three clusters. What this link community algorithm does is actually first uh, they design a quantity to quantify the distance between edges and then use the traditional hierarchical clustering algorithm to generate the clusters. And then the red shows the hierarchical clustering. I found the link community algorithm particularly uh, useful in, in many uh, network clustering settings. Uh, for example, if you pull out your, for example, Facebook, you will definitely have a cluster of your friends, and you also have, you have a cluster of your relatives. I will suppose you are in the middle of the two clusters. So which cluster do you belong to? If you apply a node-based uh, network clustering algorithm, you will finally be assigned either of the clusters which does not reflect uh, the reality. But if you apply this link community algorithm, uh, it will tell us that you belong to both clusters, which is the reality. In terms uh, to calculate the distance between two edges, uh, the algorithm only calculates the distance between two edges if they share one node. So this figure shows how to calculate the distance between edge ik and edge jk. To calculate this, the distance between them, you, you first find uh, all the neighbors of node i, include i, which will be all these nodes and node k and node i. Then you find uh, all the neighboring node sets of node j, including j. That was the plus means, uh, means include i and j. And then the, the distance between edge ik and edge jk will be the intersection of uh, these two sets divided by the union of these two sets. The figure bc shows two trivial examples of this algorithm. So to compute the distance between edge ac and edge bc, you first find what are the neighboring sets, uh, neighboring node sets set of node A. It will be node C and the node A itself. And then you find the node set, the neighboring node set of node B. It will be node C, including node B itself. Then the intersection of these two sets will be node C, so it's one. And the union of these two sets will be node A, B, C. So it has a uh, distance of one third. If you look at the example in figure C, the neighboring node set of node A will be node A, the node C, node B, and the node A itself. And the neighboring node set of node B will be node A, node C, and node B itself. So the the two sets are completely equivalent. So their intersection and the union will be the same. So the the distance between edge A C and edge B C in this case will be 1. So this is the end of the uh, lecture. I hope you will have fun with metal clustering in your research project.